Hey ladies, my name is Esther Gonzalez and Jenny invited me to be her shop sister for the month of April. I'm super thankful and I feel super honored just to be able to do this. Jenny, I love you so much and thank you so much for this opportunity. Well, I just wanted to share with you a little bit of how the Lord has used suffering in my life in order for me to get to know Him better. I really hope that you guys find this video uh, encouraging and I hope that um, if you're going through a uh, season of suffering and pain that you can um, find hope and comfort in the Lord alone. Well, so I am originally from Honduras. I have been in the States for uh, seven years now. I came straight from Honduras to, uh, to Louisville, Kentucky to study at Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. Um, you know, like that journey was very hard, but by God's grace, I was able to, you know, to to be enrolled at the seminary and to study my master's in biblical counseling. Um, you know, and the, yeah, while I was studying, I had the opportunity to meet this young man. Um, you know, as soon as we we were introduced, we just hit it off. You know, we uh, we started this like very sweet friendship that turned into a very serious relationship. Um, after a year and yeah, and maybe two months, uh, we got engaged. Um, I was so happy, so excited. Like getting married or being married has always been like you know my ultimate dream, right? Just um, yeah, like that that one thing that has always made me um yeah just dream about life and what's gonna happen and you know always dream about like wearing that wedding dress and you know um having all this like big party and whatnot you know just seeing my parents together and my family as well just rejoicing with me and finally being with the love of my life you know that man that was gonna make all my dreams come true uh, little did I know that actually the Lord was going to change my plans for his plans that actually I thought I had my plans but let me let me actually fix that phrase that I just said you know I thought I thought I had my plans but what I was actually following was God's plans from the very beginning so um, for a couple of reasons, that engagement I uh, fell through. You know, it was it was broken, and I was deeply hurt. All my dreams, all my plans, everything that I had in my mind and in my heart was gone. You know, I remember very very well um, that time in you know in the month of May, actually, where him and I were having this this hard conversation that ended up in me returning a ring you know it was it was so it was so hard you know it has been four years since that happened and um, has been very you know just just very difficult the thing is that um, Two days after that engagement was broken, my sister passed away back in Honduras. And honestly, like, you know, before I received the news of my sister passing away from an unexpected heart attack, um, I was trying to figure out how I was going to tell my family what just had happened. You know, I did not want to talk to anybody. I was so heartbroken and so, um, yeah, just in so much pain that I just didn't want to talk to anybody. So anyway, uh, the day that I received the news that my sister had passed away, um, I felt like my whole world was just crumbling around. It was, uh, it was horrible. It was. It felt like I was in a nightmare, 
you know I was crying my eyes out and I didn't know why I was crying because I had so many things going on you know by God's grace my church Highview <laughs> Highview Baptist Church actually sent my sister Melody and I back to Honduras to be with with my parents honestly like I I am always in awe because like the Lord has used my church in so many ways just to bless us and um, to really show us how how a biblical community looks like you know a godly community of people that really care for you really really looks like so anyway I had to go back home you know and in the midst of uh, all the pain that my parents were already, already experiencing I had to give them the news that that engagement was was broken you know so it was it was absolutely difficult well let me tell you you know that um, I had so many thoughts in my mind I I started questioning God's character and his goodness I every single thing I knew about God I I just went through each one of them um, asking myself if I, if I truly believed that if that was actually true because um, I knew that God was good I knew that he you know that he was faithful because that's what the Bible says but it didn't feel like that at that point I I couldn't I couldn't believe that the Lord was you know that he would make me go through a whole year and a half of a relationship and allow me to get engaged for that relationship not to end up in marriage I just couldn't believe that he couldn't wait just a little bit more maybe like the next year you know to take my sister but he did it exactly in the same week you know I I felt that I was I was pretty good of a Christian and I didn't deserve that I I felt that I you know I have given my life to him that I was actually in seminary trying to find ways to serve him and to live my life for him um, so that was just not fair it was just not fair to me I just I just couldn't believe that he had done that you know I remember telling the Lord Lord I I have been living my life for you ever since I was a teenager I repented from my sins I gave my life to you and I have been living for you this whole time why are you doing this to me you know one of the things that the Lord revealed in my heart was the fact that I thought I was living my life for him but I wasn't I was actually living my life for myself you know I I can't tell you right now that um, my relationship with the Lord changed a lot ever since the situation happened with me you know I've never had the opportunity to ask myself those questions about is God really who he says he is is he like how can I say that he is good when I'm when I am in so much pain right now how can I even pray how can I even worship how can I even sing whenever I feel like God is really doing this to me he says that he is going before me but I feel that he's kind of like against me at this point you know so I feel like the Lord just took me to a place where I could actually just sit down and think and meditate on God's character and his attributes and you know yeah just just who he is so I started walking through a really hard journey you know so in the midst of that journey the Lord took me to the book of Lamentations um, you know if you if you haven't had the chance to read through this book I will highly encourage you to do it to take the time to go through it you know obviously Lamentations 3 is my favorite and I remember very well reading the very first verse that says I am the man who has seen affliction under the rod of his wrath he has driven and brought me into darkness without any light surely against me he 
um, he turns his hand again and again the whole day long. You know, suddenly I could relate so much to the word. Suddenly I felt like the scripture was actually talking to me. You know, it wasn't distant anymore. It wasn't something that was like, oh yeah, well, whatever. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I should not want. It was just, you know, like suddenly like the word became alive, which is exactly what the Bible says about itself. You know, the word of the Lord is truth. You know, it is alive, right? But I've never experienced that before. You know, another, uh, another uh, verse in chapter 3. In verse, um, yeah, in verse 16 and 17 and 18, it says, He has made my tree, my teeth greed on gravel and made me cower in ashes. My soul is a uh, beautiful feast. I don't know how to say that. <laughs> um, I have forgotten what happiness is. So I say, my endurance has perished so has my hope from the lord you know this is exactly what i was experiencing you know this is exactly what i was experiencing i was like just asking the lord why he has turned his back you know from me and he was making me suffer so much you know but as you if you continue reading in verse um in verse 19 actually says remember my affliction and my wandering in my worn wood in the in the gall my soul continually remembers it and is bowed down within within me but this i call to mind and therefore i have hope the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases his mercy never has come to an end they are new every morning great is your faithfulness the Lord is my portion says my soul therefore I will hope in him you know what ladies one of the things that the Lord showed in my heart was to find that I was trying to find hope and comfort somewhere else other than him you know in this in this verse it says the Lord is my portion I was seeing Mary just that as, as that one thing that was going to bring me complete joy and complete satisfaction complete safety and complete everything I could have imagined you know marriage was was the key for me you know to um, stability to hey like now i i can i can start my life now because i'm married and i'm gonna be able to have children and be someone i'm gonna be someone else's wife you know i think i just i just didn't realize how much i was seeing marriage as that instead of seeing the lord as that which he is you know he really is my security he really is my provider he really is what i need he is my portion you know um it says therefore therefore i will hope in him you know i realized that i just wasn't hoping in the lord at all i was actually walking away from the lord those all those years without really real realizing you know i just didn't know that was happening in me and my heart was broken you know just to see that i was so quick just to question the Lord because something so crazy and horrible happened in my life just knowing that he really does um, is in control you know I'm super thankful because um, I know that the fact that my my marriage didn't happen um, I know that it was it was because the Lord had like he had his own plan for me you know it wasn't it wasn't until then that the Lord taught me how to truly trust in him and to truly want to live my life for him it was that same year that the Lord just put this huge desire in me just to you know just to start praying for someone to mentor me for someone who would take care of me and uh, disciple me and the Lord just started opening doors in an amazing way 
you know, I I um, I develop a really good relationship with Ruth McCoy, which is the um, the women's ministry director, and she just took me under her wing, you know, care for me, walk with me, talk with me, hurt me. Um, yeah, it was just it is <laughs> it is amazing because we still have an amazing relationship. Um, I don't think I would have, you know develop that relationship if this wouldn't have happened that year i started my internship in high view and i just had this huge passion you know to serve the lord and to care for women that are broken heart and just in the same way that i that i was you know like i feel like my my counseling ministry started there the lord just filled my heart with compassion and for love for older women you know and i wanted i just wanted to do that with all my heart you know he became the priority that I needed to have in my life you know regarding to my sister uh, my sister had seizures you know seizures yeah um, when she was um, I mean she had seizures like her whole life you know she was always suffering and she was um, she was 35 she was really young you know uh, she was down syndrome I just I just love her so much uh, love her so so much that I pretty much dedicated my whole life just to care for her you know I I had this unrealistic fear that one day like she would pass away without me being around and that's exactly how she died <laughs> you know that's one of the things that like I um I always like ask the Lord like why you know why not an accident you know why not like I don't know a situation where I could actually just go to the hospital and be with her the very last days of her life you know but it was like exactly how I dreamed that it would happen that I was so scared and so fearful that's exactly how it happened you know like she she died on her sleep um, while she was like by herself and you know in her bed uh, I used to sleep with her at night because I was scared that she would that she would pass away while she was asleep you know so I always yeah I mean at that point you know not anymore by God's grace but um, at that point I was just like why 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 were you so specific you know you like you knew you knew my heart you knew exactly the fear that I had like why why did you allow this to happen exactly in that way and you know I just felt like the Lord just put this this um, thought in my mind that said you know I did that in such in a specific way so so that I can show you that even if your greatest fear in life were to happen I'm still gonna be there for you and with you you know the way that my sister passed away that was the yeah that was my greatest fear I used to have panic like panic attacks in the middle of the night just like being so concerned if like she was okay or not I will call my mom early in the morning saying hey mom how are you hey how's how's Araya doing and my mom will be like she's she's fine what's wrong with you <laughs> like are you okay you know ever since the Lord took my sister I I haven't had any panic attack anymore you know now I say that I have no fear <laughs> I don't have like yeah like biggest fears in life I don't have that anymore because I know that the Lord will be with me you know another thing that was like so helpful for me um, in this time of like suffering uh, was to go through the book of Psalms the book of Psalms oh my goodness you know I think I've never again I was a seminary student I've been a Christian for for a while and I've never never experienced um, just being able to grab my Bible and to hear the Lord speak into my life through his word in the way that he did it with me you know like in that season like never never before so I started reading the book of Psalms and I yeah it was just amazing to me just to see how much I could relate to the writers of all this um, of all these Psalms like they were so real they were so raw you know they were just talking about like all the pain and all the suffering they were going through but another thing that I noticed was that after they were sharing their hearts with the Lord 
they were also putting their hope in God you know like obviously Psalm 23 is my favorite <laughs> you know I love I love the psalm because it talks so much about who God is you know Psalm 23 says the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want you know he makes me lay down in green pastures he leads me beside still waters he restores my soul he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake you know even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies you anoint my head with oil my cup overflows surely surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I should dwell in the house of the Lord forever you know this this psalm is just it's just amazing because I realized that I was like walking through life wanting something that I was in the Lord you know but in the middle in the middle of my pain he was the only one who could uh, lead me beside still waters you know and restore my soul no one else nothing else could have done that you know today I'm 31 years old <laughs> I'm turning 32 in November I'm currently not dating anybody <laughs> um, but I can't tell you that the Lord has been so good to me you know marriage still is a desire of my heart but this time I would like to have it for the right reasons not to see my husband as uh, the lover of my soul and my redeemer and my savior because I already have one <laughs> you know but just to see him as a sinner who has been saved by grace that is a work in progress just in the same way that I am you know I don't know if the Lord will give me that opportunity or not but I know that even if he doesn't I know that he stills my shepherd and therefore I should not want you know so I just wanted to share that with you guys and I really hope that it was encouraging to you <laughs> I love you and I hope to see you guys around love you love you Jenny uh, I'm yes thank you so much for this opportunity and I love you guys